morning we're starting a, a new sermon series, and that new sermon series is uh, called What It's Really All About, Unwrapping the, the True Meaning of Christmas. Now, during this, uh, during this series, today and, and the next three weeks, we're going to be unwrapping a gift each Sunday, not Justin's gift, but uh, we'll, we'll be unwrapping a, a gift every, each Sunday that will help us to, to unwrap something about the, the true meaning of Christmas. Now, before we unwrap uh, the, this morning's gift, I want to um, just talk about the, the fact that today is the first Sunday of a season in the church year called Advent. Advent is a, is a season of, of preparation. Now, most of you probably talking about the, these weeks leading up to Christmas uh, call this the Christmas season. Now, in, in our, on our culture, that's what we do. We, we talk about this as a Christmas season, but, but in the church, in the church year, we call this season uh, leading up to Christmas Day the season of Advent. And it begins, you know, four Sundays before Christmas and, and lasts for, for each of those Sundays up until Christmas Day. And then the next season that we're in in the church year is called Christmas Tide or, or Christmas. So um, you can still refer to it as, as the Christmas season if you want to, but just wanted to, to let you know that in the, the church year, we're officially in a season called Advent. Well, this morning, the gift that we're going to unwrap is a white elephant gift. Now, in, uh, you'll probably some of your families may do a, a white elephant gift exchange. You know, the, the staff has a tradition that it, when we get together for our Christmas party, we do a white elephant gift exchange. And, and the thing with a white elephant gift exchange is that you take something around your house that is not necessarily useful uh, to you anymore. Maybe it's useful to someone else or maybe not. Uh, sometimes people call it re-gifting. Um, you know, but taking a, a white elephant gift and, and, and giving it to someone. Now, one of the things that we found at the staff Christmas parties is sometimes the same gift shows up year after year. <laughs> you know, that, that gift that keeps on giving. So, well, the, this morning as we uh, open our first gift, we have a, a white elephant gift. And here's what we have. What is that? I wonder the same thing. Um, you know, this is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, kind of plastic of some sort. It's a, it's a, a boy that, that's playing a, a, a saxophone. I, first I thought it maybe was Little Boy Blue, um, you know, come blow your horn, but he wasn't blue, and I always envision Little Boy Blue blowing a, a trumpet rather than a, than a saxophone. And... Uh, I'm sure this was very special to someone, um, and you know it's so special it, it's actually got kind of a layer of dust on it as well, <laughs> which is is sometimes the the case with with white elephant gifts. Well, white elephant exchanges are are fun, but do you know the the history behind giving white elephant gifts? The story of the, the white elephant actually goes back to, um, to, to Siam, which would be the, the modern country of, of uh, Thailand. And white elephants were, were rare, and they were highly prized animals. Sometimes they were referred to as albino elephants. There, there weren't a whole lot of them, but if someone found an albino uh, elephant, they would give it to the king. You know, and so the king would, would have these al albino elephants. But now the problem with albino elephants was that they were considered to be so special, even, even to be sacred, you couldn't use them for work, you couldn't ride them. You know, it was an issue that a, a white elephant uh, demanded a lot of care, but the owner got nothing in return for having this, this white elephant. And so... Tradition has it that when a, a king had to deal with someone that was particularly obnoxious or someone that uh, the king kind of wanted to seek some revenge or, or get even with, the king would give a royal gift to this person of a white elephant. 
And what happened was that this white elephant would uh, cause you know, so much care, would cause so much attention uh, of the person who, who had it, it often caused them to go into financial ruin. You know, because the king had given them the gift, there was no way that they could refuse. But that white elephant you know, was something that, that became a, a burden for them and, and really had, had little to, to no value for, for the owner. Well, in Jesus' day, there were some religious leaders that, that, um, that thought that, that there were some people hanging around Jesus that, that weren't worth a whole lot. They thought that they were a burden to society, a, a white elephant, if you will. Uh, the people were, were certainly not worthy or weren't considered to be self-respecting uh, people at the time. And I want to read you a, a story that, uh, that we can find in, in Mark chapter 2, beginning with verse 13. It says, Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were the Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they ask his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. You know, Levi was a tax collector. The tax collectors uh, collaborated with the, with the, the Romans and and the tax collector could profit by you know, trying to squeeze as much money out of, of his fellow countrymen as, as possible. You know, tax collectors were, were looked down upon, and, and they were, were even linked with the outcasts of, of society. You know, tax collectors were, were often uh, you know, were, were linked with outcasts like, like prostitutes. And in this story, it says tax collectors <clears throat> and sinners. Uh, the sinners weren't uh, necessarily uh, defined, but we get the idea that uh, tax collectors weren't looked upon favorably. You know, Jesus not only invited Levi, a tax collector, to, to follow him, but Jesus also went to Levi's home. It wasn't just an issue that he had a, a business relationship with, with Levi, but he also had a, a friendship. He also had a personal relationship with Levi that he was willing to go to his home and he was willing to eat with him. You know, and as Jesus was there at, at the, the house with, with Levi, not only was Levi there, but also there were other tax collectors. There were others who, who were looked down upon in, in the culture and, and Jesus seemed to be comfortable interacting with them. Well, the religious leaders who um, would, would consider those folks that Jesus was hanging out with, he would, they would consider them as, as sinners because they didn't live up to, to the expectations that the Pharisees had of, of, of following the, the, the rigid religious laws. The religious leaders called Pharisees were upset with Jesus because he, had, he associated with people that, that didn't have the best reputation in the community. This crowd of, of people that Jesus was hanging out with had a bad reflection upon Jesus. You know, if, if Jesus were truly righteous, then he wouldn't associate with people like this. But Jesus hung out with, with people who might have been called white elephants. They were burdened. They were outcasts. It, the religious leaders didn't see that or didn't think that they had any, any good purpose in, in, in the culture. They, they were more trouble than they were worth. As Jesus heard the, the questions and, and, and the accusations of the Pharisees about who it was that, that he was hanging out with, then Jesus responded to them by saying, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have come to call, I have not come to call the righteous, 
but sinners. Jesus didn't come into this world in order to, to hang out with people who, who had it all together or to hang out with people who thought they had it all together. But Jesus came in, into this world to, to, to heal and to bring transformation to, to the lives of, of, of those who were broken, those who were, were living far from God, those, those who, who were referred to in, in the story as, as sinners. Levi was a, a tax collector. Because of, of being a tax collector, he was, was looked down upon by, by those around him. But Jesus gave Levi a new name. Jesus gave Levi a new purpose in life. See, Jesus gave Levi a new name. His, his new name, his name as a disciple was, was Matthew. And his new purpose in life, and instead of being a, a tax collector, he left that behind, but, but he became a, a follower of Jesus. And as a result of, of being a, a follower of Jesus, Matthew ended up being one of the writers of one of the four Gospels that, was, um, that, that told the story of Jesus' life and, and, and ministries. You know, Levi may have not had a good reputation, but he probably made a, a good living. But when he gave up his job as a tax collector in order to, to follow Jesus, you know, it was an issue that uh, financially he may not have been as well off as he was as a tax collector. However, you know, Levi had been healed. Uh, Levi was made whole because of walking with Jesus. I know a guy about 15 years ago who had a, a, a six-figure income and and, um, you know, Jesus called him to walk in a different direction in his life. And, uh, and my friend, you know, as he made that decision to, to walk away from his job and, and to follow a, a different calling, a, a different career, because of that, there was healing that came in his life because of his brokenness, because he was willing to, to respond to, to Jesus' call in, in his life. You know, Jesus said, I didn't come for those who are well, but I came for the sick. I didn't come for the righteous, but I came for sinners. Who might Jesus be criticized for hanging out with today? Recovering addicts? Maybe hanging out with addicts who were not yet in recovery. Maybe he would be criticized for, for hanging out with with homosexuals. Maybe he'd be criticized for, for hanging out with, with those who are in prison. Maybe he would be criticized for, for hanging out with sex offenders or with abusers. If that's who Jesus would be hanging out with, if we are his followers and, and we are called to, to follow his example, why aren't we spending more time with those who live outside the circles of those who might be considered righteous. Jesus didn't come into this world to, to save all those who had it together, or maybe I should say those who thought they, they had it all together. Jesus came to, to heal those who were, were hurting, were broken, were willing to, to admit that they were, were hurting and, and broken. Jesus brings forgiveness. The Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We don't experience forgiveness in our lives by trying to justify ourselves. Justifying uh, ourselves to, to ourselves, justifying ourselves to God, or, or justifying ourselves to others. It's an issue that each of us need to be forgiven. Jesus extended grace. Grace means that we've been given a gift we do not deserve. There's nothing that we can do to, to earn the, the gift of God's grace. There's nothing that we can do to earn the, the gift of, of salvation. In Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, Paul writes, For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. 
salvation, which means being saved from our, our sins and, and being in a right relationship with God, comes to us as a gift. But as God gives us this gift, it's a gift that, that we must receive, a gift that we must receive for our own. This is why Jesus said that he did not come for, uh, for, for those who, who were righteous, Jesus came for those who needed to be healed. Jesus came for those who, who needed to receive his grace or were willing to receive his grace. If Jesus came to, to heal us, then maybe sometimes we need to ask Jesus for a, a diagnosis. Maybe through prayer we need to ask Jesus to, uh, to help us see what it is that we need to be healed of or, or healed from, what needs to, to change in our lives. Even though Jesus can bring about instantaneous healing, even though Jesus can bring about instantaneous uh, change in our life, often that's not how he works. Often change comes in our life gradually. You know, gradually healing us of, of our brokenness, gradually healing us of, 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 our, of our broken heart. You know, and, and in that process, in that process of, of healing, often he, he makes us stronger. In, in that process of, uh, of healing, you know, we become more Christ-like. Jesus came for the white elephants in the world. Jesus came for those who, who feel they are outsiders. He came for those who, who feel that, that they're marginalized. Jesus came for those who, who feel like they are burdened and, and unworthy. You know, at the beginning of the, the service today, uh, Rick asked you a question of what was the most useless Christmas gift that, that you've ever received? Now, I don't know what, when I think of that question, I, nothing comes to mind of what the most useless Christmas gift is that I've ever received, but a gift comes to mind as the most useless Christmas gift that I ever gave, and, and maybe there was more than, than one. But it was a gift that I gave my, my mother when I was in third grade, and it was a, a gift that I had uh, searched through the Sears and Roebuck catalog to, to order for, for my mother. Um, it was a statue of a cat. It was a white cat made out of something that was kind of like, um, I don't know, crystals compacted together. It was about six inches long and about three and a half inches tall. Um, you know, it didn't look, uh, it wasn't a real size cat. It didn't look lifelike. My mother doesn't even like cats. I have no idea why I got my mother that, that gift uh, as a third grader. But, you know, that was many years ago. And my mother has downsized from a, a farmhouse that was full of, of many things to one room in her retirement home. And sitting at her door is that cat. <laughs> you know, the... Worst gift that I ever gave my mother, but yet she has prized it for all those years because it came from her son. There are times when, when people feel like they're white elephants. They feel like they're a burden. They feel like they're unworthy and, and useless. But in God's eyes, they are of infinite worth and value because he desires to be in relationship with them. <laughs> I remember a, a woman by the, the name of Mary that uh, grew up in the, the, or lived in the community where I grew up. And on more than one occasion, I, I heard Mary say, well, I'd never go to church. If I went to church, the, the roof would cave in. Now, I don't know exactly what Mary meant by that when she said that, but I always assumed that she meant, I've done so many horrible things in my life that, that if I show up in church, the roof's going to cave in. You know, God's going to get me. God's going to kill me if I, if I show up to, to church. And, and that's just not how God works. 
if that's how God worked, he wouldn't need Mary to show up in church. You know, God knows where Mary is all the time. You know, Justin told us last week that you know, he knows when we rise up and, and, and when, we, when we lie down. You know, maybe she was afraid that, that if she went to, to church, God would find out something or about her that, that he didn't already know. Again, as Pastor Justin told us last week, God knows everything about us. Nothing is hidden from him. Maybe you feel like a, a white elephant because you don't think your, your clothes are, are nice enough or, or you don't make enough money or, or maybe you have some sort of disability or, or, or maybe you have, have made some decisions in, in your past that, uh, that you're not proud of and, and, um, and are facing the, the consequences of, of some of those decisions or, or you're embarrassed by, by those things. What Christmas is all about is not about you being good enough, but it's about God who loved you enough to send his son into the world to make you whole. God sent his son into this world as a gift for you. All you must do is to to receive that gift. And the way you receive that gift is by repenting of your sins and and believing in Jesus. You may feel useless, you may feel like a a failure, but in God's eyes, you are a precious child, and he loves you. Jesus did not come for those who have everything together. He didn't come for those who have life all figured out. He came for those who need to be healed. He came for those who are broken. He came for sinners like you and me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into this world, not for those who have it all together, but for those who are broken. And so, Lord, in this day, in this day of of preparation, I pray that uh, you would meet us in, in our brokenness. Lord, may you touch us at our point of need and and bring healing, bring restoration. And Lord, above all, may you help each of us to experience your grace in a fresh and, and new way. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen.